I haven't been flying the Ortus in a very long time. I believe last time I used one of the ships was right before implants were released. Now back then I used the Ortus as a torpedo troll boat and honestly I really like that build. The torpedo troll Ortus is fantastic but highly risky. Now with implants I believe the ship has been changed quite a bit and the Mordor ships overall have been buffed. I believe that they have enhanced their speed and the ship has received it. Now let's go to the ship info, to the basic info and to the trait description. Uh, Robons, minus 50% missile torpedo flight time, plus 200% missile torpedo flight velocity, plus 1 warp scrambler strength. Advanced medium missile torpedo operation bonus will give you plus 6% medium missile torpedo damage, plus 5% medium missile torpedo explosion velocity. And the advanced cruiser command bonus will give you plus 10% scrambler and plus 10% disruptor optimal range. So overall, looks pretty good. Now, on the attributes and fittings, the Ortus is basically the same. One drone, six high slots for medium, for low, three combat and three engineering rigs. The Ortus is still a shield tank, although uh, tanking on the Ortus is a little bit difficult because the capacitor on the ship is not that good. This is one of the features for all Mordu ships, their capacitors are definitely not the best and it's very easy to lose capacitor if you're flying one of these ships. However, the speed is a little bit improved, the warp speed is also okay, so the Ortus did become a little bit faster and overall I believe the speed increase was uh, needed because these ships are kite ships and kite ships need speed basically to maintain a long-range orbit around the target. So, let's take a look at the build that I have on this little boat. Now, 1,109.09 DPS, well, the game just did not want to give me 2,000 cold DPS for some reason, but overall, uh, this is the Torpedo Troll Ortus build. Now, I actually used a exact build like this into PvP, and honestly, like I mentioned before, I really loved, uh, love this build, uh, it's crazy how quickly it kills the targets. Dual scrammers, one Osferatu, one web, in the low slots one afterburner, dual ballistic controls and one large booster. You can also fit a extender if you like to go PvP with this build. It works really really well. Now for the rigs, I have the classic DPS setup, triple bay loading accelerators. They increase the rate of fire by 12.5% and have triple auxiliary thrusters that increase the speed of the ship. Now the tank, well, uh, as expected, the tank is non-existent on this ship. Uh, basically, you have the booster just to repair the little damage that you take, but you can't really tank for a very long time with this ship. I have the Cyber X nanocore. Now the nanocores for this ship are I would say most are basically the same. The damage increase is very... There is a very little difference, honestly. Some will give you 18%, some 90%, some 16%, but overall uh, that's not much. And the Concord cores are still, I would say, the way to go. You don't have to go and get the Cyber X core. I don't upgrade the nano cores, I usually keep just one the one attribute, basically the main attribute. Now on to the implants. This is where the fun uh, starts with this ship. So I have the warhead charge. Now the warhead charge is one of my favorites. The warhead charge can basically swap between precision and long range missiles and also it can swap between certain damage types. Here you can take a look at the stats of the the warhead charge. I use explosive missiles combined with thermal missiles and I believe you can change that into EM or kinetic missiles depends on what type of uh, what type of damage type you want or what type of target you are fighting. Explosive against shields while I uh, explosive against armor and hull while I use thermal for shields that's basically how I use the missiles. I I'm thinking to go back and buy the Ortus again and fly it in PvP again, but I'm not really sure uh, if you know if that's the way to do it because I already have like 3,000, 
3.8 thousand kills on the Ortus, so I think I I did fight this ship a lot. So I still ha I still have to decide. 1,007.50 DPS. This is with the classic mode. 1.7 kilometers per second, which is honestly not not bad. It's pretty good. Okay, almost 2,000 DPS with the explosive missiles. Now with the long range missiles, I have. 23.17 kilometers. The DPS will, of course, go down a little bit, 1.8 thousand, but still pretty good DPS. With the precision missiles, that will improve damage application. The explosion radius is 43.03 meters and velocity 126 meters per second, which is again pretty good. It should hit cruisers really well. Now let's take a look at the maximum possible DPS. 2.4 thousand with one ballistic control active and with the second one active 2.9 thousand DPS, not bad this is actually pretty solid and you should be getting about 6 to 12 thousand alpha hits with the torpedo launchers which is honestly for a cruiser that's pretty good okay now let me dock there is there's a couple more implants that I would like to show you here now. One of the newer ones, I think it's called Tactical Missile. So let me just quickly find it. It's somewhere over here in this long list of implants. Okay, there it is. Tactical Missiles. So these missiles can be used on the Ortus really well. Uh, they can basically point... Uh, they can point the target. And... Can be really good, they increase the damage by 32.5%, maximum is 32.5%, they also increase your explosion radius by 20%, so you will kind of lose the damage application a little bit, and of course the description of the implant might be a little bit confusing, but uh, it doesn't do damage to all targets, it, it basically focuses on one target only. And here we can quickly take a look at the secondary attributes that I have installed. Overall, I believe that they should work really well on this ship. Although the, the self-pointing is a little bit, uh, let's say, suspicious, but nowadays everyone, everyone flies with stabs, so it should not be a big problem. And Precision Strike, it basically does remove some negative effects that the main skill gives you, but overall I believe that the I believe that this implant might be fun, might be useful, and I will show you how the DPS looks when this implant is used. The general units are focused on DPS and ship booster, but you can use any general units that you like. Any combination that benefits the ship is going to work just fine, and level 15 is more than enough. So Let's take a look at the maximum possible DPS. Now, last time I tried this implant out, I actually had higher DPS on paper than with the Warhead Charge, but the Warhead Charge had better application, so in terms of DPS, the Warhead Charge might actually be the way to go. Now, 2160.56 DPS with dual ballistic controls active. The DPS is 3080.28, which is already a little bit higher than the Warhead Charge, but the damage application might be a little bit off. And let's take a look at the 45, level 45 attribute, 3840.06 DPS. Now the, D the DPS on paper is definitely much, uh, much better, but it doesn't last. Uh, that long, it basically lasts like 60 seconds or something, so the Warhead Charge has the constant DPS and has the better damage application, while these missiles have the higher paper, paper DPS, but they don't last very long. That's basically the main difference between the Warhead Charge and with the tactical missiles. Both are fun, and I would still go with the Warhead Charge just because they are so satisfying to use. And we have the support projection missile implant. Now this one is also good. It does have some energy neutralizing uh, effects on the target. It also has the same modes as the other missile implants. 
and I can quickly show you the level 15 and level 30 attributes. Overall, very good implant for a fleet. Uh, very good if you have multiple of these ships flying around. Basically, you can cap the, the capacitor off your target very easily. Now we can go with the normal medium missile launchers. They have excellent range. They have terrifying flight velocity, but the application and the rate of fire might be a little bit lower. And you can also use this. You can use th these missiles with the warhead charge support projection, or you can even use them with the tactical missiles. The classic build for the Ortus is this one, basically a long-range kite, although uh, sometimes I swap into four disruptors. The Scrambler and Web are basically for defense against targets that can get close to you, but most targets nowadays don't get close to the Ortus because I believe the Ortus pilots uh, became a lot more skillful and a lot more difficult to catch. I remember when I used to fly this ship, I made this thing popular basically, and uh, there were so many Ortuses flying around, it was, it was very funny. And most of them actually did go down, because this ship is one of those ships that requires a lot of skill to fly. It's definitely not a easy to fly ship. Okay, now the game did mess up my modules, as usual, and this is the layout that I like on, on this ship. So, let's take a look at the active stats. 3.6 km per second with the... Almost 3.7 km per second with the micro drive is actually pretty good. With a micro drive unit, I can get that up to 4 km per second. And that is already some really, really good speed for this ship. 1.5 thousand DPS with the explosive missiles. With the long range mode, 1.4 thousand DPS. And 71.94 km missile range, which is really good. With the precision missiles, the application will be improved, but the damage will be reduced to 1.3 thousand DPS. 48.2 meters is the, rate, see, is the explosion velocity. And let's take a look at the, at the DPS, although the internet is not on my side here. For some reason I have serious, serious lag going on. Okay. The damage control is active, the ballistic control is active, my apologies. 1.9 thousand DPS at 55 kilometers is pretty good. And overall, I'm very happy with the result. That's some really good DPS, honestly, for the, for the Ortus. Docking request accepted. Okay, let's go and swap to the tactical missiles. That's the next... Implant to to roll. Of course, I have to scroll all the way down to it. There we go. Now I expect the DPS to be a little bit higher, but the applicable DPS will be lower because of the increased explosion velocity. And ex uh, I mean, I mean uh, the increased explosion Undocking. radius. My apologies. Okay, one point six thousand DPS, which is okay. The ballistic control is active. Now it's two thousand twenty point fifty eight DPS, and with the level forty five attribute. 2515.43 DPS, which is good, but of course, keep in mind that you, your DPS will not be the applicable DPS on the target because of the penalty that you get on the explosion radius. The smaller Docking the radius, the accepted. better the damage application. That's uh, basically the thing to remember. Now, the Ortos with Therapy Missiles also works really well. And the Ortos with Therapy Missiles is a frigate killer. You definitely do not want to be anywhere near an Ortos that uses Therapy Missiles if you are flying an Interceptor or a frigate. They can pop your frigate, even with the normal missiles. So you can imagine what Therapy Missiles will do to an Ortos on an Ortos against any any frigate out there, you can also increase the range and the damage application of the missiles by using missile guidance computers. Overall, 
I'm very happy with the result with the with the rapid missiles and 1000 DPS with the classic DPS build. Let's go and take the warhead charge and then we can test out the maximum possible DPS on the rapid missiles on the Ortus. Now I can technically improve the DPS even more if I feel like it. I haven't used tier 4 rigs, I haven't used the integrations. With Undocking. integrations we can actually improve the DPS even more, although the paper DPS will go down, but the applicable DPS that you do on the target will definitely go up by a lot. So the integrations work with missiles really well. You just have to uh, be very smart about how you do the integrations. That's basically what I did with my old Ortus that I sold. It was fully integrated and it did a very good job. 1.3 thousand DPS with the explosive missiles, with the uh, long range missiles it's 1.2 thousand DPS. For 1.02 kilometer is the range. With the precision missiles, 1.1 thousand DPS. 30.77 is the explosion radius, which is already uh, really terrifying. And let's check out the maximum possible DPS, 1.6 thousand with one and with the second ballistic control, 1.9 thousand DPS. Which is higher than the DPS that I had with one damage, with one ballistic control using the normal medium missiles. Well then, uh, overall really Docking good result with the, with the implants on the Ortus. This thing is a monster. Definitely the best cruiser to go and fight battleships ships with, or battle cruisers. That's perhaps one of the reasons why I might actually go back to the Ortus very soon. And let's take a look at the DPS with the tactical missiles. The new implant. The unit setup is the same as with the other implants and I haven't... I did not change anything else besides that on, on this boat. Okay, let's undock and let's see what is the maximum Undocking. possible DPS on on the Ortus using the tactical missiles. Okay, let's let's shoot the station. 1.4 thousand DPS with the main attribute active. With the other secondary attribute active, 1.7 thousand DPS. And with the ballistic controls active. 2,542 DPS, which is really, really good. Of course, uh, it's going to last about 60 seconds. Okay, let's uh, dock and I believe Docking it will be time to accepted. go and do... Let's actually uh, see how this ship runs. So, for high sec missions, I like to go uh, full on, full on DPS because in high sec you don't really need a lot of tank. Now, in low sec it's a little bit different. Uh, I would use the long range Ortus in. Low sec, We're under attack. basically with the micro warp drift unit, so that I can easily avoid all of the all of the pirates. Now the Ortus can technically orbit at 100 kilometers if you have the right build, and it does that really well. And I still recommend that you go run storylines in uh, Amar space or in Nimater space because that's where. There is not many pirates around. In Galant and Calder you will find the most pirates. So that's one thing to keep in mind. As for high sec, the Ortus does have DPS that can, I would say, can match the DPS of a battleship. So your clear times will be really good. And you don't have to worry about uh, taking, a l taking a long time to clear the mission. The Ortus cleared missions very quickly, as we can see. 
and so far no issues with the application and no issues with the speed or tank all right sorry for the weird cut i had to to do a let's say a small pvp on the on the different screen so far i think we are clearing this very well i mean i'm clearing this very well this is wave number two now i did choose the torpedoes for this because they have the highest dps and their application is already pretty good so i'm not going to be having any damage application issues with the mordu ships after all the mordu ships have the best missile damage application and best best missile stats out of out of all Enemy missile ships, ships in the game the only ship that can get close to them We're is the typhoon attack. typhoon one and typhoon two and i believe the cyclone can also be uh, very good in terms of missile damage application but the other missile ships rambled. might suffer on that aspect so the mono ships get very good paper missile damage and they can apply We're most of attack. that damage to the target now rapid missiles would work really well however with rapid missiles you might take it might take a bit more time to destroy the battleship or the battle cruiser so that's i guess that's one thing that might be an issue but with the rapid missiles in low sec you should be safe against tackle ships now it's a very interesting idea to use the ortus for low sec storyline missions i know some of my friends who do it and they have no issues with it However, it does require you to have very good skills, it does require you to have very good skills with flying the ship. Not only, not only the skills in-game, but overall piloting skills and experience in the game. After all, it is very easy to lose one of these ships. Now, I did try to make the Ortus tanky in the past, but in the end that never worked out well. The main issue in making the Ortus tanky is the capacitor. Now, you can make a passive shield tank with a large extender that does seem to work really well however it's still very risky to fly these ships uh, at a close range now if you are skilled if you know what you're doing and if you had a lot of practice with other ships or if you're like me who spent like one full year flying the Ortos as my main ship then you can probably do that uh, without a problem and the thing that I did not use stabs on this ship with A types in in the past that was that was insane. Uh, now I I don't think that I can do I don't think I can add A types on this ship anymore because uh, not only has have things changed but the Orotus itself doesn't really need them uh, anymore. The classic C types are are more than enough. Well, so far, the mission is going smoothly. It will be interesting to see uh, what's the clear difference, the mission clear difference between the warhead charge and the tactical missiles. I believe that the warhead charge will clear missions faster. Don't be uh, surprised by that because the warhead charge has better application and overall has more stable dps while the tactical missiles are more of a pvp focused implant and they do give you paper dps but you will lose a lot of application so uh, that's these are the differences between the the implants you can technically run the missions with the, the low sec missions with the normal medium missiles but I will still take the torpedo launchers because in high sec you should be safe and you don't have to worry about pirates basically in high sec go full DPS minimal tank one afterburn and one large booster with one Nosferatu is enough you can even replace the one scrambler into another web so you have dual webs and that way 
you can technically apply even more damage to the targets, especially against the smaller ships. That's the that's the way to go with the Orcus. Now this build that I'm currently using can be used for PvP as well. This is basically the same build that I used on my Torpedo Troll Orcus. Now my experimental Torpedo Troll Orcus did, did go down, uh, mostly because I have messed up the orbit. When you're fighting a tanky target, especially a tanky battleship, don't really go orbit at zero. Now against battle cruisers, against cruisers, against things like that that you can basically kill in seconds, you can go orbit at zero. But against ships that can be tanky and that you cannot kill in a short time, in a short time frame, then you should go and orbit at about 15, 16 kilometers, which is still very risky because uh, sometimes, at least in my case, the, the game just does not want to recognize the orbit that I set and the ship just orbits at its own weird orbit. But a 16-15 km orbit is the way to go, after all you have 17 km missiles and if you go with the long range mode you can enhance the range even more and that, that way you can stay, stay safe out of webs, stay safe out of scrammers and you can keep on shooting the target does work really well, however don't use the Torpedo Trortus against ships like the Balgorn or Vindicator because they can kill you because they have long range webs, Warp drive neutralizers, active. Nosferatus and things like that and against these ships use only the long range kite build. Now let's see how the tactical missiles work on the Ortus. Let's undock and let's go straight to the mission. Autopilot so, engaged. hard DPS but lower damage application, that's the main thing about the tactical missiles and it does give you Undocking. points, basically gives your ship points, literally. You will, be point you will be pointing yourself, which is kind of funny, and you'll be pointing the target, which is also very reached. funny, but can be good for tackle, especially nowadays when there is ships with, I don't Warp know, 80 active. stabs flying around. The Orthos is one of the only ships nowadays that can truly do classic solo PvP because even two scramblers have the strength of 10 scramblers, so that's uh, basically that's basically what is keeping ships from warping away. And when I think about it even more, it We're makes me attack. want to get an Orthos even more. So uh, I guess I will have to. I guess I'll have to get an Orthos again and do classic solo PvP. Again, the Orthos is one of the only ships remaining in the game that can easily do solo PvP without any fancy nanophores or attack. without anything like that. So that's why I truly like this ship. It's insane and it just wants me... The game probably wants me to keep flying the Orthos again. And I guess I'll have to do it very soon. I haven't been flying it in a very long time, honestly, and I kind of miss flying the old school ships. Uh, the Orcus is one of the ships that I'm known for. I made this thing popular. Not really sure how popular the Orcus is now because I swapped to Cinnabal, I swapped to some of the other ships. But I believe the Orcus is still one of the most common ships to find in low sec, still one of the most common ships to be to be jumping you in your mission. And by solo, I mean literally solo, you don't have to have an alt, you can slap a scanner, web or nosferatu and dual scrambers and that's the way you can go with, with the Ortus. The one drawback, of course, is definitely the the very, and I mean very, very bad capacitor. This thing has one of the worst capacitors 
of any ship that I ever had in this game. And the fact that they have changed how the micro-objects work, basically they have shortened the cycle time, which in return that does improve the energy usage. So that made the capacitor on this thing even worse. And that's why I used capacitor batteries on the orders. It's also one of the main reasons why you have to have really really good skills on the orders if you really want to, to take the most out of it because in most cases if you don't have good skills for this ship you will definitely be experiencing low performance out of the orders. Now I remember uh, I argued with a lot of uh, a lot of folks in the We're past. There has been someone who will be unnamed who was literally yelling how the Ortos is the, the worst ship, the worst cruiser in the game. And you know, I'm all fine with that. I mean, I don't really. I think most players don't really care if, if someone calls a certain ship bad or good. Uh, it doesn't really matter in the end because. Uh, the player is what makes the ship and if a player calls a ship bad then it means that the player is just bad with the ship not the, not the other way around the ship is mostly fine but the player is not really you know not really quite skilled with the ship so that, that happened a while ago and it, it was really funny because that player is well I'm not really sure if I, if I can call them a player because they don't play the game but uh, they haven't tried out the Ortus. They have no idea how the Ortus works. <laughs> and at the time, I was I was really surprised because uh, some folks really showed their true colors in the last couple months. And I'm very happy that I mostly did stay the same. When I go back and watch some of my older videos, I well, I sound better because of the new equipment, but uh, I mostly do the same thing that I did before and. Uh, nothing has really changed. The only thing that really has changed is the fact that my ships did become more expensive, but now they became cheaper. So I believe that's uh, the only big thing that changed over the last three years, but I mostly did stay the same. So uh, that's basically that little funny story that happened. Of course, it did not stop me from flying the Ortus and don't be discouraged from flying a ship just because someone says that the ship is bad. The ships are good, most of them are fantastic and it's not the ship that's good by itself. The player has to make the ship good and at the time when the Ortus was, was really fresh, as you all know I'm one of the first ones to jump on the Ortus and well, I'm one of the first ones to actually do PvP with the Ortus. I made the ship work, I did complete the 999 kill mark challenge without losing the ship. So that by itself should prove that the ship does work really well. And I have to say at the time, honestly at the time I don't feel like I was, I was playing that good because I remember watching myself make mistake after mistake and my own mistakes <laughs> made me really mad mad at myself for making this, the, the mistakes but in starting from not December but I believe starting from like September or something of last year I actually start to to play much much better I found myself making little, little to, to no mistakes or sometimes when I make a mistake it's not really my mistake because most of the issues that I have recently were were internet related or hardware related as you all know one of my devices has kicked it well it did not kick the bucket but uh, 
the operating system did, so uh, that's one thing that that happened. So I had to I had to fix it. But now everything should be working fine and in control. Also, I find it very funny how every time I start recording something like this, uh, we have a lot of targets flying around and each time I have to pause or each time I sound a little bit distracted by something, uh, most of the time I am, I am distracted uh, in PvP, so my apologies for that. But back to the Ortus, I think this did take a little bit more time to finish and I believe you can also notice that the overall alpha damage has been a little bit reduced. That's because of the of the implant. So paper DPS is nice, but I personally prefer to have better damage application than better paper DPS. A phenomenal example of that is the Typhoon 2 vs Raven. That debate is still ongoing, uh, but I like to uh, settle things down in that debate by saying that I like to use bow ships and bow ships have their purpose. The Typhoon 2 is phenomenal in, in low sec for store lines because it can easily eat small ships, the pirates and things like that, but the Raven and Raven Striker can be really good in low sec where you have a lot of big ships to blast, so each one of these ships has its Warp purpose. Drive active. Okay, well then, uh, let's dock up this boat overall. I'm very happy with the Ortus performance, uh, the implants and the overall changes on the Mordor ships definitely made this thing scarier than before. And there is a good chance that I might uh, decide to return to the Ortus. After all, I, I really do miss flying this ship. It's such a good ship. And well, with that being said, I really hope that the builds that you see here can help you at building your own ship. Or at least I hope that I can inspire you to, uh, to make your own build that also works really well. And with that being said, I love you all. Fly safe, stay safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.